Hello, welcome to this new lecture of Math is for One Dynamic Optimization. This is the third video on the three part uh, lecture, you could say, on the implementation of the Bellman equation using uh, programming software. Okay, so in this lecture, so we already have seen the value function iteration, you already have seen interpolation, how interpolation can speed up the algorithm. So in this lecture, we're going to look at another. Uh, method to speed up the computation, and that's the Howard improvement or the policy function iteration. So, title is the Howard improvement, also better known as the policy function iteration. Okay, so as before, let us start with the Bellman iterator. So TV of x is the maximum of a in g of x of fx a plus beta b a. Okay, so what we have seen is value function iteration, you compute the value function each period. And then you plug it in back here, and so on and so on. Now the policy function, uh, you know the policy function basically tells you the optimal thing to do, right? So it's given by the solution of this maximization problem. So uh, the policy function iteration works on not on iterating the value function, but on the idea of iterating a policy function. Okay, so let's start by the idea of having a policy function so this is a function gamma which associates with every state uh, an action right such that gamma of x is in g of x okay feasible action <clears throat> so that's a policy function so what you could do with this policy function well instead of if you look at the objective function here, fx a plus beta v a, what you can do instead of a, you can plug in gamma of x. Okay, and in this case, if you do this, then you get the value fx gamma of x plus beta v gamma of x. Okay, so for any function v and for any policy function gamma, you can compute this function and what you get is basically a new function. Okay, so this defines an operator. Let me call this H for Howard improvement, which will depend on gamma. Okay, so maybe you can use the sub index gamma of a uh, function V. So H gamma of V, and now this H gamma of V is computed at the state X. Okay, so this is another operator, right? So gamma h takes a function v, here this one, and produces a new function uh, v. And you can show that this is also a contraction mapping. Okay, so it satisfies Bellman uh, Blackwell's condition. So if uh, monotonicity is easy, right? So if v is smaller than w, then this will be smaller than the same expression with w. So if v is smaller than w, then h gamma of v will be smaller or equal to h gamma of w, right? This is easy to check and also additivity is quite easy to check. <clears throat> so h gamma of v plus a will be less or equal to h gamma v plus uh, beta a, okay? So additivity is also satisfied. So satisfies the Blackwell condition. So this function here, h, here, here I'm looking for additivity of bounded functions, but because we're looking at the implementation, all functions f are bounded, right? Because we're looking only at finite grids, okay? Uh, so these are Blackwell's conditions. So we know that this is a contraction mapping, okay? So, if you have a contraction mapping, what you can do, or what you can do, is you can start with any function v and the policy function, 
gamma, right? So here gamma is fixed. You can compute the iterate of v, right? And then, of course, you can substitute back in to the function here, compute a new one, and so on, and so on, and this will converge to the fixed point. Okay, so this fixed point, what will it satisfy? Well, it will satisfy that v of x is equal to f x gamma of x plus beta v gamma of x. Okay, so this is the fixed point of H uh, gamma. Okay, so this is the policy iteration. And this can be compute this fixed point can be computed really, really fast. So why can you compute it really, really fast? Because you don't need to take the maximum. Right? Here you need to solve a maximization problem. Here there's no maximization problem at all. It's just plugging in the value of gamma into this function, up, you get a new function, right? So this goes really, really uh, fast. So how does this help us to compute this fixed point, the fixed point of this Bellman equation? Well, for this, we need a policy function uh, procedure, policy function iteration procedure. So the idea is the following, right? So you start with the function v0, Okay, and then from this you will compute the function v1, v2, and so on, that will converge to the fixed point of the Bellman equation, v star. And how you do it is the following. So at the starting stage, you first, so the first thing that you can do is you, that you do is you compute next iterate of the Bellman equation, fxa plus beta va. Okay, but in this case, you're not interested in TV, but basically you're interested in, in the arc max, right? Which is going to be gamma uh, of X. Okay, so it, at some iteration, you arrive at the function VN. Okay, then the policy function that comes out of this maximization problem, let's call this gamma N plus one, okay? So you save this policy function and then you're going to look for the fixed point of H comma N, right? So you're going to use this policy function into the to compute the fixed point of this operator, right? Which should depend on the policy function. This should be n plus one, right? Sorry. So you have gamma n plus one, you compute the fixed point of this Howard uh, function. So, so gamma n plus one for some function v, right? This is fx gamma n plus one x plus beta v of gamma n plus one x. So there are a lot of indices here, a lot of brackets. Right, so you're going to iterate this over and over and over again until you get the fixed point and call this function vn plus one. Okay, so this is the fixed point of this operator here. And then once you have this fixed point, what you're going to do is you're going to plug it back in here and compute a new policy function. Right, this will now be gamma n plus two. Then you're going to compute the fixed point of h gamma n plus two this result, you're going to store it in Vn plus 2, and you're going to feed it back into this step 1 here. So policy function iteration goes back and forth between step 1, step 2, step 1, step 2, and so on. So each step 1 involves a maximization, and then each step 2 computes the fixed point of this operator here, which doesn't involve any maximization at all, right? Okay, so that's basically the Howard improvement uh, procedure. So the fact that this algorithm, right, going 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, and so on, the fact that this converges, this sequence of functions actually converges to a fixed point, and this will be the fixed point of the Bellman equation, the, the argument for this is a bit uh, more different than uh, the argument that we usually made based on contraction mappings. 
So the idea is that if you start with a function v0, then you can show that this will be less or equal to uh, t of v0. This will be less or equal to v1. And now v1 is the function here from this algorithm, right? This will be less or equal to t v1. This will be less or equal to v2, and so on. Okay, so in particular, we get that v0 is less or equal to v1, is less or equal to v2, and so on. So this is an increasing sequence of functions, right? And this is pointwise, right? So for every x, you will get an increasing sequence of functions. And then normally, this could go to infinity, right? But because we're working on a finite grid, any increasing sequence of functions has to converge to something. Right, so this will converge to v star, and because we know that between every v the tv is sandwiched, this is going to be equal to tv star. Right, so basically this is the argument uh, why this converge. So first thing that we need to show is that actually this doesn't go to infinity, and this is uh, in principle fairly easy. So let's assume that f x a smaller or equal to m, right, and we want to show that the uh, if v is smaller or equal to some fixed number, right, let me k, right, then tv is also lower or equal to some, some big number k, right? So if v is smaller than k, then tv is smaller than k, then we know that all iterates will be smaller than k, so indeed the limit will also be smaller than k, right? So that's the idea. And here the, the bound on f is because the grid is finite, right? So if you have only ma finitely many x's and a, then every function is bounded. Okay, so let's show that this is actually hot. Let's try to compute this value of k. So we know that tv is equal to the max of a and g of x of fx a plus beta v a. Okay, we know that this one is lower or equal to m. And we know that this one is lower or equal to k, right? So we know already that this maximum is less or equal to m plus beta k. And you want to show that tv of x is also lower or equal to k. So if you can show that this is lower or equal to k, then we're done. Okay, so basically we only need to find the value for which this is uh, satisfied. And if you try to do this, then because beta is smaller than 1, this will be satisfied if and only if uh, m smaller than 1 minus beta k, right? So a value of k greater or equal to m over 1 minus beta will do the job, right? So basically this shows that every function here <coughs> is smaller than m over 1 minus beta. So in the limit, it also has to be smaller. So this indeed converges to, to something. Okay, so the only thing that we actually need to show now is that this sequence indeed uh, increases. And this involves some uh, nice arguments mm -hmm. with a lot of indices. So if you're not fond of all these technicalities, maybe uh, you can skip this part and go immediately to the coding. I just want uh, to be complete. So let's first look at some gamma n uh, policy function. So remember, we define gamma n plus 1 to be equal to the arc max of a in g of x of f x a plus beta v n a. And then we define v n plus 1 to be the fixed point of the Howard improvement. So v n plus 1 is equal to f x gamma n plus 1 x plus beta v gamma n plus 1 x. Okay, so that's it. So let's first compute h gamma n plus 1 of v n at x. Well, we have that this is equal to f x gamma n plus 1 x plus beta v n gamma n plus 1 of x. And we know that gamma n plus 1 solves this maximization problem. Okay, for vn. 
So this is actually equal to maximum of a and g of x of f x a plus beta v and a. Right? These two are by definition the same. And max of this thing here, right? This should be v n is equal to t, and this is the Bellman operation of v n of x. Okay, this shows that t of v n is equal to the first iteration of gamma n plus one of uh, v n. Right? These two functions, these are going to produce the same uh, function, and this is something that we will use. Uh, in the other part of this proof. Now, let us first show that for every v, right here, vn is smaller or equal to t of vn. Okay? So, let's take t of vn, right, at some point x. Then we know that this is equal to the max of a and g of x of f x a plus beta v n of a. Okay, so this takes the maximum, right? So if I substitute, if I take any value in this g of x, this will be greater or equal to this function evaluated at this point. Okay, so in particular, it will be greater or equal to f of x at gamma n of x plus beta vn of gamma n of x. Okay, so here gamma n of x is in g of x, right? This takes the maximum one. Here, this is just a, a feasible one. However, this is the fixed point of the operator h gamma n, right? Because vn was the fixed point, right? So if I plug in vn on the left-hand side, what I get out of it, uh, on the right-hand side, what I get out of it is actually vn of x. Okay, so this indeed shows that at every x, vn is lower or equal to t vn. Okay, so this indeed shows this inequality here. Okay, so what remains to be shown is that t of vn is less or equal to vn plus 1. Okay, and this is what we're going to show in this uh, in the second step. So the second step, how are we going to do it? Well, we're going to start at TVN. Okay, and then we're going to show that this is actually, well, actually we already have shown it, right? TVN is equal to H gamma N plus one VN. Right, so this is equal to H gamma N plus one vn. We're going to show that this is less or equal to h h taking again on this uh, thing here. So h after h of gamma n plus 1 vn. This is less or equal to the taking this function and iterating it again using the policy function iteration gamma n plus 1 third vn and so on. All right. And we know that this iteration here goes to the fixed point of this iterator, and this is going to be v n plus 1, right? So this is going to show that t v n is smaller or equal to v n plus 1. Okay, so basically this is uh, what we're going to do, and we're going to prove it by induction. Okay, so first of all, let, let us show that indeed this is true, right? So let's put this on the right, on the left hand side, gamma n plus 1 vn and let's evaluate it at some point x and i'm going to subtract h gamma n plus 1 vn at the same point x and i would like to show that this is greater or equal to zero okay so let's see what this is here by definition this is f x gamma n plus 1 of x plus beta of this is h well this is here this is h of h gamma n plus one of h gamma n plus one of v n right evaluated at x okay so this is the h operator of this function here okay so this is h 
gamma n plus 1 of Vn validated at gamma n plus 1 x. Okay, so this is a bit notation heavy, but it's just applying the definition of the h operator. And then I'm subtracting this one here. So this is minus f x gamma n plus 1 x minus beta and then vn of gamma n plus 1 of x. Okay, and this one here is the same as this one, right? So this already cancels out. So this is equal to beta <coughs> of h gamma n plus 1 of vn at gamma n plus 1 x minus vn at gamma n plus 1 x. Okay. And h gamma n plus 1 vn, right, we know that this is equal to tvn. Okay, so this is equal to beta tvn at gamma n plus 1 x minus vn at gamma n plus 1 x. And we know that tvn, right, tvn is greater or equal to vn. This is what we have shown here in the first step. So tvn is greater or equal to vn, so I know that this is greater or equal to zero, right? So this is the base case of my induction proof, okay? And now for the induction step, let me assume that I want to show, I have shown it for the first case steps. Now I want to show that if I take the k iteration of the h gum n plus 1 of vn, this is lower or equal to h of k plus 1 of gamma n plus 1 of v. Okay, this is what I want to show now. So the idea is the same. I take h k plus 1 of gamma n plus 1 vn, evaluate it at some state x, minus h k gamma n plus 1 of vn, evaluate it at the same state. This is equal to this fx gamma n plus 1 of x plus beta and now h with one iteration less k gamma n plus 1 of vn at gamma n plus 1 x and then minus here this part here which is fx gamma n plus 1 x minus beta of h one iteration less k minus one gamma n plus one of vn at gamma n plus one of x okay so again this first terms drop out we have that this is equal to beta of hk gamma n plus one of vn evaluated at gamma n plus one x minus h k minus 1 of gamma n plus 1 vn of gamma n plus 1 at x. All right, and by the induction hypothesis, I know that hk is greater or equal to hk minus 1 gamma n plus 1 of vn, right? So I know that this is greater or equal to 0. So this is the induction step. So this finishes the proof that indeed the procedure for the Howard improvement gives me an increasing sequence of functions v1 into vn and this converges to the fixed point of the uh, Bellman equation. Now this is the theoretical part but actually uh, the big advantage of this one is computationally as we will see in a minute but first we're going to try to program this. So here I'm back with my program this is the basic program without the interpolation so i removed everything in terms of interpolation again so uh, this is a basic program and we see that we have actually reached convergence after 200 uh, iterations of uh, the value function iteration okay so now the idea is to see how we can modify this problem to take into account the howard improvement uh, or the policy iteration algorithm okay so Basically, if you look at the value function iteration, 
So what are we going to do? Well, we're going... This is the iteration of the Bellman. Okay. And then basically we're going to use this gamma in order to compute the fixed point of the policy function iteration. And this is going to be our new value of this, of, uh, of the value. Okay. So we're going to have to make a function. Uh, let me call this... the hour improvement. So what I'm going to need is I'm going to need the policy function. Okay, and I'm going to need a, let's say, a starting value for V. So the starting value for the value function is not necessary, but it might be good to have a already a good starting value to start from, right? So that the number of iterations that you will need is not too big. Okay. So this is going to be a while loop, right? So until it converges, so I'm going to use a distance number, which is, I'm going to set equal to some big number, and then an epsilon, which I'm going to put equal to uh, a very small number, right? So, and then while this is bigger than epsilon, I'm going to uh, update or iterate the Howard improvement and so on. Okay, so what I need, I need a TV. Well, first of all, let me first get the size of my grid, and TV is going to be a vector of zeros uh, for n. Okay, and now I'm gonna have to compute TV. Next iteration, let me call this HV. Right, because I, I call the operator H. Then HV is going to be objective value. So I'm going to have to compute this. Let me do this explicitly, right? I'm going to have to compute this for every state, right? So for i equal to 1 to n, HV of i is going to be the objective value of i at what's going to be the next state? Well, this is going to be gamma i, okay? So we have to value at the current state, at the next state, and then plus beta times v at, and now it's going to be v at the next state. And the next state is gamma so maybe it's easier instead of all these gamma i's to be the first say okay so this is the index what's going to be the next index is going to be gamma i right the policy function this is the gamma so the objective value at a i and i next and of course i'm going to have to also give it the k and v here right gonna have to give it my grid anyway and then beta v at i next okay so i'm going to have to iterate this over and over and over again okay so first i need to once i've done this i need to come update my distance so this is going to be the maximum of the absolute value for the of the difference in the vector of h v and v Okay, and then I'm going to have to update the v function, so v is going to be a copy of hv. Okay, and then I'm going to end. Once I have reached convergence, I'm going to return v. So the value function is basically the only thing I need. I need not need to store the uh, policy function. There's no policy function here, right? The policy function is fixed. So I'm going to end this. Okay, so this gives me my Howard improvement. I hope I didn't make any mistakes. It's a bit uh, quick programming. Now the interesting part is here, right? Once I have uh, run my max uh, value, now I need uh, to update my policy function, right? I need to compute the fixed point Let, let me introduce a new vector. Let me call this v next. It's 
zeros n and then v next is going to be the Howard improvement it's going to take the policy function of the previous iteration it's going to take the the grid and v so instead of v maybe i can take tv right because tv is probably going to be a better starting value for this iteration because it's already improved by one step uh, okay and then i have to update my distance now the distance is going to be the difference now between not v and tv but between v and v next okay the fixed point of the howard improvement and then i'm going to copy v next into v i'm going to loop one print the loop number and the distance and i'm going to return v and gamma and gamma will be the last policy function here okay so that's good so fingers crossed let's try to run this and remember with the value function iteration we had 200 uh, loops let's see how many we have now so let's try to run this okay so there seems to be a problem. Um, so what happened? Bounce error, attempt to access a thousand element at index minus one. So gamma of i is minus one at some point. Is this what's happening? Why would I return the minus one? This means that op index at some point is minus one. Okay, let me let me pause now and see if I can fix the problem. Okay, so after long searching, I found uh, my mistake. So here at the Howard improvement algorithm, I put something like objective value plus beta v uh, i next. And of course, beta times v is already in the definition of the objective value uh, as I have it here, right? So beta v is already in here. So it's already included in the definition. So basically what, what's happening here is that uh, this is wrong. So I have to delete this. Okay, so sometimes it, it depends on the <coughs> small subtle mistakes in the algorithm. So normally everything should work fine uh, now. So let's try to run it again. And remember, uh, with the value function iteration, we had to have 200 iterations. So let's see how we are doing now. So again, the value function or the, the distance is decreasing you can see so apparently there's there's like a hiccup here which is not good so I'll have to dive into this why this is happening but apparently now we only have 37 iteration instead of 200 right so this apparently goes much much quicker than it uh, normally goes okay so this is the, the big improvement on the on the Howard iteration that the number of iterations that are necessary is much slower so normally you will converge much quicker to to the to the value function okay so i checked and double checked my code but i couldn't find it so what i did in the end is I, I changed the optimization algorithm back to the previous one where you go over every value and just pick the highest one um, so apparently what's happening is that the the upper bound lower bound id is probably not always correct in this case so probably the Howard improvement, the, the V function that you get out of it will not always be first increasing and then decreasing. Okay, so apparently there's something strange going on where you don't always get the concave function. So what happens if I take this old maximization algorithm? Well, if I run it, now you see that indeed these uh, distances are really uh, decreasing. Okay, so there's no hiccup anymore, where the, suddenly the values increase. And actually it converges, so, so the iteration is slower because of the maximization step. 
right? But it only takes 17 iterations to converge, right? So, and then if I plot the value function, it actually looks identical as previously. So apparently you have to be careful here because uh, some optimization algorithms may work better with uh, a value function iteration than with uh, policy function iteration. So this is also something new for me. So apparently the, the function that you will ga get out of the Howard improvement step will not always be a nice concave function, right, in this case. Okay, well, so let's go back to the Howard improvement. Um, so the fixed point of the Howard improvement was the function v, such that this at the point x was equal to fx um, gamma of x plus v gamma of x, okay? And you would like to write this in uh, vector notation. So my v is simply going to be a vector, v, right? So v1 to vn. And then f, fx gamma of x, I can also put this in a vector, right, of size n. So this is fx1 gamma x1, okay, until f xn gamma xn. These are simply numbers, right? So I can put them in a vector. And now here, what's this? This is v at gamma of x. And you know that gamma of x, we put this in a vector. So basically we can, we would like to write this as something, some matrix here times this same vector v here, right? Because we're computing the fixed point. Okay, so times v1, vn. So here we can do this by making an n times n vector with zeros and ones, right? And when will we have a one? Well, we put a one, right? So at row n, so here where we have a uh, xn, right, at row n and column i f gamma at xn is equal to xi. Okay, so basically that's what you want to do. If it turns out that gamma xn is equal to xi, well, then this v will be equal to vi. So at row n, we need, at column i, we would need to have a 1. And we have zeros at uh, other places. Okay, so we can, for, for example, put this in the matrix A, an n by n matrix. Every row has everywhere a 0, except at row n, we will have a 1 at column i if xi is the best response to xn. Okay, so why does this help us? Well, basically, there's only a unique v that satisfies this equation, right? That's that's by the fixed point property. And we have shown that we can basically write this equation as v is equal to some vector f plus this matrix A times this vector v. Okay, so in order to compute v, this is basically an equation, a vector equation, where v is unknown. Well, we can make i minus a times v will be equal to f. So v can be computed as i minus a to the power minus 1 times f. Okay, so basically this equation, if you can compute a vector a, you can compute a vector i, and you can compute a vector f, this equation will give me the fixed point immediately, so I don't need to loop over this uh, contraction mapping over and over again in order to compute the fixed point, I can simply do it using this uh, equation here. So the only thing that we actually need to do is we need to compute the inverse of i minus a, and this also takes some computational time, right? Computing the inverse is not so easy, so it's like uh, you have to, to uh, compare the cost of iterating the policy function iteration over and over again until you have 
almost six points, or computing the inverse of a matrix, which is also a computational conversion. So here I'm again at my code. So let's, let's try to change this uh, function by computing the fixed point immediately using matrix notation. So let me get rid of this uh, immediately. So what do we need? Well, we need, first of all, um, we need the uh, function f, or the vector f. So f is going to be a vector of size n, right? And we call that n was simply the length of the of the grid. Okay, and so let us populate uh, this uh, function f. Well, for i equal to one to n. Well, now f. Well, we haven't defined the function f uh, yet. But basically, we can get it from the objective function, right? So f i is going to be equal to objective value, right? At uh, now, let me think i, and then gamma of i, which is going to be the cap stock next period, and then k and v. Okay, but this already subtracts beta times v. So or it already adds beta times v, so you have to subtract beta times v uh, of gamma i. Okay, so the objective value, if you, if you look at the definition of this one here, so basically we only want the first part, right? But here we also add beta times v of the next state. So if you add it, then we actually also have to subtract it again. Okay, so this should give me the vector f. And then we need the vector a. So let's define it as a matrix of size n times n. Okay, and I'm going to put uh, some equal to one and for i equal to from one to n a at position n and at position gamma it's not n but i position i gamma i i will set it equal to one okay so now i have my matrix a and i have my matrix f and now i am compute computing my fixed point so i can do this immediately here i think so this is going to be uh, identity matrix so let me first uh, I think there's a special command for the identity matrix but I, I have no idea what it is so let me just put it like this so it's the ma zero matrix with one on the diagonals right so I minus a I have to compute the inverse okay I hope this is the command Maybe it will give an error, I don't know. And then I have to multiply it by the vector f. Okay, so that should give me my my uh, fixed point. Oh, okay, and I forgot the beta. All right, so this is a minus beta. This is, should be the dot, right, because you're uh, multiplying every element of a by beta. Okay, so let's see if this works. I'm a bit curious. I haven't tried it before. Right. So it seemed to converge. Right. So this is good. I have no idea. It's It seemed to go uh, to run at the same speed as the previous time. Right, the same number of iterations, which is, is normal, and it doesn't seem to go faster or slower than what we previously had. So previously in the lectures, I forgot the beta, right? There should be a beta here. So we should pre-multiply the vector A by beta, because what you have is that V is equal to F plus beta times A times V, right? So here the discount rate beta was forgotten. Okay, thanks again for uh, watching.